You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Urma Bishamish Israel 5782, 2022. This week's Parsha in Chutzlar is Parshas Matos and Mase. And then Eretz Yisrael's Parshas Mase. We finally join this week. Coming back together, I think it's symbolic as we enter the nine days and we remember Eretz Yisrael in Yushalayim and we mourn the destruction and we mourn our exile. And we think about, contemplate our desire to return to Eretz Yisrael, return to Beis Hamigdash, return to Yushalayim. That we speak about the travels of the Jewish people as they are heading towards Eretz Yisrael, as they are heading towards the Holy Land. And I'll just share with you a thought at the very end of Parshas Matos, beginning of Parshas Masse, end of Matos, we have the desire of Reuven and God. These two Shvatim, and later Chatzi Shevet Menashe, half of the tribe of Menashe, to have a section immediately outside of Eretz Yisrael, has a certain Kedusha, lacks a certain Kedusha. Their focus, their focus being a certain focus, we'll see what it was. We're going to speak about that. We're going to read a Medjish from the end of Parshas Matos, and we're going to read a Medjish from the beginning of Masse, which has to do with when do we run away? When do we run away from danger? When do we run towards a place where it seems we have a better chance of material success? And when do we recognize that it's Hashem who is going to help us, who is going to take care of us, provide us with all of our needs? What is the contrast between those two items and how does it connect to the difference between Ruven, Gan, and Chatzishev, and Asha versus Moshe Rabbeinu? The proper approach to material wealth, the proper approach to spirituality. So the measure says like this, Umik Nerav, the, the tribes of, of Reuven and Gad, they said, look, we have a lot of cattle, we have a lot of material possessions, the correct place for us, we see that this section, northern section of the west side, right, is that correct, the west side? No, the uh, east side of the Jordan River. That area should be for us and for our cattle because of all of our cattle. says the Medrash, we have here a very important lesson when it comes to the difference between the right side and the left side. The wise person leans to the right. The foolish person leans to the left. What is the idea we're not speaking about Pesach here. What is leaning to the right, leaning to the left? The verse in Kohelis, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2, says that the wise man's heart is to the right. This is the good inclination of a human being. Right? We have two forces inside of us which push us in different directions. We have a spiritual force. We, we refer to it as the good inclination, the Yitzhar Tov. We have our conscience which pushes, pushes us to the side of goodness. And that, says Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon says, is on the right side. The heart of the fool is on the left. What is the heart of the fool, which is on the left side? This is a reference to the evil inclination, the part of a human being, the baser part of the human being, which pushes us in the direction of physicality, of material, of material how would we say materiality? I don't know if there's such a word. The material. It's our evil inclination which sends us to the left. The left is the weaker side. And the left is the side of gvura, of selfishness. The right side is the side of chesed, of kindness. So our Yitzhar Taiv is interested in coming together with other people, of doing kindness to others, giving charity. And Yitzhar is saying, hey, I'm not interested in that. I need to keep the money for myself. I don't have enough. Right. What is the focus? Is our focus physicality, material, or is our focus on spirituality? That's what the Pasuk lays down for us. Another distinction between right and left. The heart of the wise is to the right. Elohim at Sadikim. This is a reference to the righteous. Shehim Yamin. They give their heart to the Torah, which is to the right. What is our focus? 
What do we think about? What's the first thing that we do in our day? The Torah, the tzaddikim, the righteous, who we strive to be like. The righteous make the Torah the main thing. The right side, they, they push to the right. Shanemar, miyamina yesh das lamay. To the right is the fiery law, the fiery law, the law of the Torah. The Torah gives us limitations. The Torah gives us boundaries. The Torah says, there's no such thing as a free-for-all. You can't do anything you want. There are limitations. There are boundaries. And those boundaries are healthy and important. It's a fiery law. The Torah is on the right. The, The left side refers the foolish heart, refers to the wicked, what is their focus? Their focus is on material wealth. As the Pasuk says, to the, to the left is the aspect of wealth and honor. That's me, me, me. Again, focusing on myself, focusing on what I want, unbridled wanting, right? That's the, we could say, a, perhaps a definition of the Western world today, unbridled wanting, consumerism. I'm going to run you over because I want what I want. Right, so the contrast between the right side of the of the righteous, spirituality, Torah, the left side of the wicked, focus on just gathering more and more wealth. Davar another parallel idea, and this brings us back to Aparshas Matos. Lev Chacham Minoi, the the heart of the wise is to the right. Zem Moshe, that's the approach of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moses, right? He had a certain understanding, he had a certain feeling, a certain gisha, a certain approach. But the heart of the fools to the left, who is that? This is the sons of Reuven, the sons of God, that they, these two tribes, they made the main thing secondary, and they made the secondary thing to be the main thing. As the Yitzhak explains, there was something, even, even within physicality, right? We could talk about spiritual versus physical, but even within the physical realm, the material realm, we could speak about the fact that you have a more spiritual aspect of it and a more physical aspect of it. What did the Bnei God and the Bnei Ruven do? They made their money more important than their kids, Right? Children are an extension of ourselves. When we think about it, what do we have in this world? What remains? Where does our where does our roshem uh, is the word in Hebrew? Where is our effect in the world seen the most? It's through our children, right? And yet, and that's what we have that remains after we are gone from this world, right? Our children, yes, our actions to a certain extent, but much less. Our children are what remains. They said, I want to, I care about my, my money more than they said that they care about their children. They say to Moshe, They said, We want to stay here. We want to stay in this area, this very lush area. We want to build pens for our animals and cities for our children. So they put the animals first. They put their livestock first. They put their money, their wealth first. Moshe said to them, that's a terrible approach. Don't put your money first. Don't make, don't make that more important. Make the, make the main thing main thing. Put your priorities in the right, in the right uh, order. Tchila. Moshe, when he responds, he says, build indeed cities for your children. That's the first thing that he says. And then afterwards he says, build pens for your sheep. That's the idea, the concept of the heart of the wise is to the right. And the heart of the foolish is to the left. These are the sons of Reuven and God. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that there's a very big mistake that's being made here, a very 
when we have the priorities in the incorrect order, so there's a very big mistake, you made your, your material wealth more important than your children, than your spiritual. Chayechem in bracha. Hashem says to them, I promise you, you have no blessing. There's no future. When the material is placed first, when that's what's more important, there's no future. The Pasuk says, Also Pasuk by King Solomon, our wisest of all men, in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 21. It is a very confused inheritance at the beginning, and in the end, it won't be blessed. What's the confused inheritance? There was like a confusion in the, in the B'nai Gad and the B'nai Ruvain. There was a confusion in their attitude. They had a lack of proper priorities. In the end, it's not going to be blessed. Don't work so hard to get rich. Stop, stop, you know, using your intellect for for uh, gathering material wealth. What's in the end? What does it mean that the blessings will not be in the end? We know that the Vinegar and Vinay Ruvain, Chatzisheva and were the first to go out into Gullus. They were the first to go out into exile. They lost their connection to Eretz Yisrael. They lost their connection to the Jewish people. Lost forever. Why? Because of their incorrect priorities. Their focus on that which was incorrect and wrong. They didn't want to Eretz Yisrael. They didn't want to come into the land itself. They were too focused on their material wealth. They were too focused not on their spiritual futures, not on their children, but rather on their, on their cattle which represented wealth in those times. Bezu Asher HaSamech B'chalkai ends off the Medrash. Who is considered wealthy? Who is truly wealthy? Someone who is happy with his lot. The work of your hands when you eat it, when you recognize that what you already have is all you need. When you have the Midah of Histapkus, when you have the character trait of ha- being happy with your lot, Recognizing that what you have is exactly what you need, exactly what Hashem Taylor made for you. Praiseworthy are you, and good is for you. So this is the first medrash, this is the first idea that we see, that the mistake that is possible to make, especially in our Western world, which is so focused on wealth, and on trying to guarantee all of our needs are met, and beyond. The excuse... As you've heard me say, and I reiterate it because it's so important, especially now to think about it. We're in the three weeks, we're talking about exile, we're talking about we were thrown out of Eretz Yisrael. How do we get back to Eretz Yisrael? How do we get back to the land? How do we get back to Geula? How do we build a foundation for Mashiach? As we, if you read what's going on in, in the Shemun Esra every single day, the Amida, there's an order, and first Jerusalem is built, and then Kisei David, then the throne of David comes in. First, there's a return to Eretz Yisrael as it is today. Seven million Jews living in the Holy Land. How do we get back here? Says the Medrash, as I understand it, the mistake that we make that leads to Gullus, that leads to exile, is thinking about our wealth, thinking about that classic reason why people don't come to Eretz Yisrael perhaps. They say, how am I going to make a Parnassa? Right? That thought, that putting the focus on the Parnassa, they also say, well, my kids and chinuch, which I believe is a terrible mistake. It's completely not true. Amazing to see, Baruch Hashem, my children grew, uh, were born here in Eretz Yisrael, raised here in Eretz Yisrael. They're, it's amazing to watch how much they know. A girl in fourth grade, how much she knows. She's. Um, I was learning something yesterday with my son, Moshe Dov, on the phone. He's 19. And uh, my nine-year-old said she corrected us about something that we were learning in Rashi in, in, in the Chumash. She knew she knew better than, than we did. Nine year old. Amazing. The the our children in Eretz Yisrael have an opportunity to know so much. Start off knowing the language of the Torah. Hebrew. They speak the language. They can read a Pasuk like it's because it's their language. What is our focus? What is our focus? Material wealth, comfortability it's comfortable here. It's comfortable here in Gullus. It's comfortable here in exile. Let's stay here. Is that our focus? Or is our focus, what's best for our future spirituality? What is best? I know people, Baruch Hashem, moving to Eretz Yisrael, who have said, they, they, they live in a particular location in the United States. 
They're, they're coming to Eretz Yisrael, Bezrat Hashem, after Sukkot, with Hashem's help. And they said, you know, we're living in Eretz Yisrael, but Hashem, we have everything we need. I'm sorry, we're living in Chutz Laaretz. We're living in the, in, the, in the Golden of Medina. We have everything we need, but we're, we're lacking something spiritually. We feel like there's something lacking in our spirituality. They're coming here because of that. Amazing to see. Amazing to see people who recognize this truth. What is our focus? What, where is our future? Now let's read the, the Medrash from the beginning of Parshish Masay. Halacha, Misha, Yanir, Dov, Min, Agoyim. I mean, at least the Ma'u Sheikh, Halas, Hashav. It's very interesting. Is a person allowed to desecrate the Shabbos if, if they're in danger, they're in mortal danger? They need to run away from someone who's chase, chasing them, non-Jews, soldiers, listing or, or robbers. Kachshan Rav this is what our sages tell us. Indeed, a person is allowed to save his life, of course, as we know. You're allowed to run away, you're allowed to break Shabbos, you're allowed to, to escape from mortal danger. This is a very interesting introduction. This is the very first Medrash in Parshas Masay, introducing us to the Parsha, introducing us to the travels of the Jewish people. So we see that David, when Shaul wanted to kill him, he ran away and he was able to, to escape. Okay? So he was able to escape and he was indeed able to, it seems that he was running away even on Shabbos. Okay, so that was King David, and we're going to see that it wasn't just true of King David, but it was true of other people as well. And we're going to go through this rather quickly. Our sages say that there was a story that the great sages of Tzipori, which was a city in Eretz Yisrael where there was yeshivas, some very negative edicts came from the, from the from probably the Roman government so what do we do what should we do should we run away he was afraid to tell them to run maybe it was Shabbos or maybe it involved the the Avera of leaving Eretz Yisrael right when someone lives in Eretz Yisrael there's it's a prohibition to leave Eretz Yisrael mitzvah to live in Eretz Yisrael he said to them, as he didn't want to say, except maybe he was afraid of the backlash from the government if he would say explicitly that they should run away. But he said to them, Ask Yaakov, ask, ask Jacob, ask Moshe Rabbeinu, ask David. The Pasuk tells us that when Yaakov was in mortal danger, Esav wanted to kill him, he ran away. When Moshe was in mortal danger, he ran away from Egypt. There is such a concept of running away, of leaving the place where one is, even though a person belongs in that place, in order to save oneself from mortal danger. Pasuk says in Isaiah that there's a concept of going into one's, of, of, of running away, going to a place which is safe. Hashem says something very important, very powerful, and I think this has to do again with my topic, which is about coming to Eretz Yisrael, which is about uh, the importance of the, and the safety of the land of Israel, as opposed to the entire world. The Pasuk tells us that a Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Look, I want you to look at the travels. Why am I telling you about these travels? Why am I telling you about all the different places that you went in the Midbar? The Midbar, the wilderness, is not a safe place. It's not a place that's naturally safe. It's not a place that's naturally inhabitable. It's not a place that you can live. There's no water. There's no food. There's nothing. There's no, there's no Yishuv. There's no nearby camp, you know, places where people live that you can buy food from them. The Midbar is the wilderness. There's no life there. But Hashem says, look, I brought you through that place. I didn't give you anywhere to run. Right? In contrast to Moshe and Yaakov and David, who did run when it was necessary. But look, inside of the Midbar in the wilderness, which was a place of extreme danger, 
There was nowhere to run. I didn't let you run away. I protected you from your enemies. I was with you. You see that I was with you. You see Amalek came to attack you and I protected you. You see that throughout your time there I was providing you with the man. I was providing you in a miraculous way with the water, with the bear Miriam. How many dangerous and wild animals were there? I didn't allow them to cause you damage. Hashem says to Moshe, I, mean, I want you to write down all of the travels, all of the locations that they visited throughout the wilderness. I want you to look at that, and I want you to recognize that I protected you, and there was nowhere to run. There was nowhere to escape to, but I took care of you in the wilderness. This is the lesson of Elamase, of the Psukim, that refer to the travels of the Jewish people. And I think that it's not a coincidence that this concept is taught right here after the Bnei Gad and the Bnei Ruvain. Because I think that there's a message here. Because we can look at Eretz Yisrael and we can say, look, the land of Israel is in such a safe place. There are Pigouim, there are terrorist attacks. There's a country that wants to destroy Israel with nuclear weapons, very close to gaining those nuclear weapons. Is it safe here? But I want to tell you that we think that we're safe in, in Gullus. We think that we're safe in exile. But all it takes, as you see from the war in Ukraine, all it takes is a moment for something to switch and the danger to be in the place that we thought was so safe. Moshe, Yaakov, David, when they realized the danger, Moshe Rabbeinu was in Chutzars, he was in Mitzrayim, he was in Egypt. He realized the danger, he had to run. Medrash tells us, Medrash in Yaakov Shemaini, in Yeshaya Perik Samech, you might have heard it from me before, it speaks about what happens before Mashiach comes, it speaks about the destruction in the entire world before Mashiach comes, before the Messiah arrives. And the Jewish people are saying, Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? And the Kodesh Baruch says, Don't worry. The final war, the final destruction that occurs in the entire world. Hashem promises and reassures us, Don't worry. Everything I did, I did for you, for your sake, to bring about a new world, a world where you have just one focus, focus on spirituality, focus on coming close to Hashem. But in that moment before, we're saying, where do we go? Where do we go? And I was thinking, you know, this Medrash is teaching us where we go. Before that moment, before that point in time where the utter destruction occurs, because really all of the physicality has to be brought down. Right? Pasuk says, that the world of Esav is completely goes up in, f- in flames. The West is destroyed. All that physicality, all of the focus on the material of Bnei Gad and Bnei Ruvain, that mistaken focus, it has to be brought down in order for the hearts to open, the hearts, the hearts of stone to be removed, the hearts of flesh, which represent the spirituality, which we spoke about here, the Lev Chacham, Liaminoi, the Lev Ksil, the foolish heart, the hearts of stone, the hearts which focus on materiality, the material, those hearts need to be melted. And how do we melt those hearts? It's through our recognition that we're in exile, and we don't belong here. We don't belong in Chutz Laaretz. We don't belong on the other side of the Jordan River. We don't belong focusing on the material. We don't belong in this place. We have to think about, well, is it safe in there? So well, let's, let's take, a, take a look for a moment. What happened in Europe during World War II? It wasn't a safe place. As soon as the fire starts burning in Esav, it's not a safe place for Jewish people to be. It's not a safe place. They get swept up in the destruction. They get swept up in the destruction. Where is it safe? The Pasuk tells us where it's safe. It's safe in the wilderness. It's safe in the Midbar. HaKadosh Baruch says, I protected you in the Midbar. I took care of your enemies. I didn't allow them to attack you. I didn't allow the destruction to occur. Where can we say is the Midbar today? Where is that wilderness? It's clearly Eretz Yisrael. Over the last 75 years, because the Baruch Hu has protected us, took care of us in miraculous fashion, be, uh, against all odds. 
impossibly it's impossible for us to remain here surrounded by all these nations all these countries that have wanted to destroy us and, and now their hearts are turning their Arab hearts are turning Iran hasn't turned yet but they're building their own gallows just like Paras the Persians so many years ago in the story of of, uh, of, of Esther the story of the Megillah the Persians built their own gallows Haman built his own gallows to, to hang upon they're also building their own gall- gallows with the nuclear stuff that they'll be destroyed with the Iranians but where is it safe in the world we think that we're safe elsewhere but it's time to think about it's time to think about where is it really safe it's really safe in that place where we have all the Nechashim, the Akravim. We have all of these wild beasts that are trying to, to hurt us and attack us. And HaKadosh Baruch who does not allow anything to happen to us here. He blesses us. He protects us. He makes the desert bloom. He helps us and He proves. He proves to us that this is it. This is the time. We're in the Ikvisa of the Mashiach. We're in the very end of the story. We're so close to the end. It's the time before that moment comes of where do we go? Come come to Eretz Yisrael. That should be our desire. That should be our goal. That should be our recognition of where is it really safe? Where is it really that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to be? Where do we belong? Versus where do we want to be because it's perhaps easier, perhaps materially it's more desirable, it's easier. But what is our focus? What is, where are our priorities? Where are they correctly to be placed? The Medrash is telling us we need to place our priorities in their correct order. We need to make the Iker Iker, the main thing, the main thing, the Tafel Tafel. The secondary thing needs to be secondary. We need to put things in the right order as Moshe Rabbeinu teaches us. The kids, the spiritual, that comes first. The material, we'll worry about the material also. You'll also build those pens for the sheep. But that's second. First is spirituality. First is the place where it's possible. That's Eretz Yisrael. Don't give up Eretz Yisrael. Don't give up your future. Don't end up in exile. Don't end up lost in exile. Because the focus was incorrect. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu was telling the Bnei God and Bnei Reuven. And that's the lesson for us. I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us. That we should be able to indeed place our priorities correctly. We should be able to indeed have a true feeling. A true feeling of loss. We're missing something incredible. We're missing the base Hamikdash. We're missing the temple. We're missing the center. We're missing the spiritual. Hashem should help us recognize what we're missing. So we can get back here to Eretz Yisrael. In time. So we can get back here to the place where it's truly safe. Where Hashem is truly protecting us. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.